Hey guys, I just got back from the Tiny House Jamboree in Austin, Texas. And during the very busy event, I managed to make time to interview and shoot a tour of my friend's fantastic bus. Bus life is more popular than ever, and I think after you see a tour of this gorgeous schoolie, you'll understand why people are going crazy for buses. Make this house our tiny home. Oh. Hi, I'm Mike with Navigation Nowhere, and this is my bus. Before I went into the bus life, I was actually in graduate school. I was studying cultural anthropology and was doing some research work. That was a really good, important part of my life. But I really wanted to get out there, start actually experiencing the world and start traveling a bit. I pretty much, you know, talked to my parents about it and was like, hey, I'm going to finish school and then I'm going to go buy a school bus. Two weeks later after finishing school, I had a bus in the driveway at my parents' house and uh, that's where it all began. This bus I did build you know, by myself without outside professionals, but it was a project with my family and I did work al alongside my dad and learn skills throughout the whole process. So it's a lot of fun and this bus means a lot to me and my family because of that. The last two years have gone by, I've met some really amazing people. I've been able to travel all over the country. I've been to every state except for Hawaii because buses don't really do too well going to Hawaii. <laughs> Welcome to the inside of my home. This bus is 35 feet exterior and the inside is about 180 square feet. This is what I like to call my dining room, my spare bedroom and my living room. So these couches are both kind of just sitting areas for when they're set up just like this, but they actually also fold out into one large bed which meets in the middle. So I have the option of either having one large bed or a half a bed depending on how many guests I have. So what size bed is this? What is it's a 44 square foot bed. <laughs> You don't have it in King Queen. No, no, it's 44 square feet. So the table is actually hidden right underneath this board. Ta da! When we put the table together, this piece slides in between the legs um, into this space. And by doing that, it just sturdies up the table and kind of holds the whole thing together. And it just kind of hides nicely right on top of the couch. I don't necessarily need a bus that sleeps six and has empty storage, which I know we're not there right now, but uh, empty storage, like <laughs> there's just empty cabinets everywhere. And the whole point of that was because this bus was built for guests. It was built for community. Um, I've had 15 roommates over the last year and a half and uh, they've all been different, flying in, flying out. This bus has been to almost every airport in the US, <laughs> and I've met a lot of security guards at airports who really enjoy seeing the bus try to drive through. <laughs> I've literally had more than eight people sitting on my couches all hanging around the table. Um, I've even had people sit on my garbage can at the end right here, and they're just like, you know, sitting on the garbage can, just like hanging out. <laughs> As you're moving back from my living room, bedroom, uh, dining room, you kind of move into this little center space, which I honestly, when I was building it, had no clue what I was going to do with it because it was just empty. So if anyone ever looked at build photos, it's like nice finished cabinet, nice finished couch, like an empty space. But I ended up putting an entertainment system in it and a heater. So it's just a propane heater and it's ducked throughout the couches and stuff. This bus has a full surround sound system in it. Uh, it's wired all through HDMI, it has a projector on board. If anyone's looking at it and like, hmm, that looks like a residential unit. It is, uh, mostly just because that's what I had when I built the bus. I'm off grid on this system, so it's not the most efficient to run a 120 thing, um, but I just simply boosted up my system to kind of supply the things that I had and, and the needs that I had. Moving on to this side, it was kind of a space that I didn't know what to do with. I thought maybe I'll get a dog later or a bunny or a turtle and it will live right there. <laughs> but uh, for now, it's just a trash can. Your pet garbage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. These are. Skies, I have three of them within the bus. So this one is used to be the one of the emergency exits. It was cut out and then this is uh, an installed piece of Margard. So it's flanged over and uh, allows light to kind of come in. Natural light is super important to me in my designs. It just brightens it up, it saves energy, and I mean, I can't complain with a skylight in a school bus. So I love my kitchen. <laughs> yes, if you can't tell where my priorities are, this is, this is where they are. Uh, like I was saying before, my bus was really built for me and people. So with that, I need to be able to take care of those people. So I do have 
a full residential oven. I do use all the burners. Um, it's one of those things where like people are like, do you really need four burners? Like, yeah, I need four burners because I'm always cooking, I'm always in the kitchen. I have all the prep space and cooking space. Everything's on lock, so when I'm driving, nothing falls. So, I mean, unlike some people's tiny houses or buses that I've seen or been in, everything in here is pretty much ready for mobility. I mean, the way the bus is right now, literally all I have to do is turn on the engine, done. I built this pantry for the simple reason that my mom has a pantry. So I thought to myself, a house has a pantry. Therefore, I built one. And it is completely unnecessary how big it is. Uh, I cannot eat this much food. People tend to come on my bus and then leave food with me, and then I have nowhere to put it, so pantry. So, <laughs> and then this is like the big question. This is a 120 residential fridge. It runs on solar. I got this for like 120 bucks off of the Home Depot floor because it was damaged. It was a large fridge, which is able to kind of hold all that food when I have six or seven people on the bus or have guests over. Uh, even at the festival right now, a bunch of food isn't even mine in here. It's people at the festivals who don't have freezers. Moving back here, this is like the mystery uh, that people are always like, do you have a bathroom on the bus? Yes, I actually just took a shower. Um, I have a full wet bath. It's got a composting toilet and a shower. It is tiled and uh, it's a residential 32 by 32 base for spacing. So if I'm showering, it's really not that hard. I'm 5'10", by the way, if anyone's you know looking, uh, but it's really not hard to be able to shower in here. Uh, right here is probably my very dirty closet. This is kind of the other section that's kind of a flip, a fold, kind of multi-use space. Right now it is set up as a living room. This space also turns into an office with two desks and my master bedroom. But uh there's two desks back here. So once again, going along with the community lifestyle, I built two desks. And uh, they simply just click in. So if I'm working here, um, I can then actually use this. It plugs into a full HDMI system into the surround sound system in the front. So it was all kind of built with the intention of the whole thing being one unit in space. These pins are simply just dowels that are put right through the wood. And then the holes corresponding from the cleat go right into these so that when you snap it in, they hold and they're flush so that when the cushion goes up, you don't feel that bump. So you're not like, oh, there's a desk back there. Who's ready for the bed? Ready. thing is if people are up there hanging out I can just go like this and they can hang out and I can go to bed and uh, vice versa if I have to go to the bathroom and do something I can just hide away back here and uh, peace well this is the outside of the bus which is a little less interesting because it's more rugged for road use and things like that but there are still a really quite a few important features that I put on this bus that really fit for my lifestyle specifically my side table. This table was designed uh, mostly because I used to travel on the road a lot and I'd always have to set up a table. So all I gotta do to drive is put it up, latch it, and uh, we're good to drive. So this is my rear garage. Uh, back here is pretty much all of my utilities. I have a welder on board. Uh, I have all of my extra tools, engine parts, filters. I mean, I, I can fix the bus from the side of the road kind of thing. So that's all my solar systems, my batteries, my inverters are all right there. So all the power and the brains of the system are back here and then it's wired through into the front of the bus. Because I'm so nomadic and I drive so often, my engine actually does a lot of the power because I power right off my alternator into my battery system. So solar plus the battery alternator makes my lifestyle happen. But if I just had solar, it probably wouldn't actually function uh, as well. This bus does have propane on it. This tank's a 29 gallon tank which is completely ridiculous. Uh, I also have 130 gallons of water underneath the bus. It allows me to be off grid for long periods of time without coming back to town. So last summer when I was in Alaska, I left town for about six weeks and never came back. And that was because I had the ability and the resources to stay out in the country for that long. I maximized this space as well as I could by putting a rooftop deck on here my AC unit, the skylights that you saw on the inside, and then my solar panels, which are mounted over there in the center. This deck is totally unnecessary and crazy, and I really think that everyone who has a school bus should have one. <laughs> it's really great to be able to go to really cool locations, 
just lounge up here with friends and be able to have some really cool views or even sleep up here like I did last night for a little bit because it was just really hot and I just wanted some cool breeze. Because this kind of bus life has really just taken me by storm and, and the community is really growing, I'm taking a lot of the skills and things that my dad has taught me and my family has taught me with building and all my experience living on the road and starting to share that with people. I travel consistently and the bus has allowed me to do that while I'm working. I live by a really good theory. It's not the number of miles you drive, it's about the people every mile along the way. National parks are cool, but so is the town before the national park, and I really try to encourage people to enjoy every mile along the way rather than just flying by on the road. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's video. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe if you did. And also, make sure to check out Mike's YouTube channel so you can see more informative videos about bus life.